Dragon mates, I hope you all having an amazing day and you are ready to change that by stepping through some code with me. For today's video I am using two tools, a DOS map from Luho and XSE from Hackmu. Either google for a download link or just use the version I am hosting on my github if you wanna try it yourself. Before we jump headfirst into the abyss I want to elaborate on some terminology so we are all on the same page. Kinda. Number one is flags. Those are simply bits that hold either 1 or 0, which is interpreted as true or false respectively. They are mostly used to keep track if certain events have already happened or not. Number 2 is variables. They are words, meaning 16-bit values, which are used to store information for further processing by the game's logic. Both of them are in essence just some section in RAM, which is absolutely the same at every point in every piece of code. This means that all of them are global and changing their value in one location will affect all other reads. Now that this is out of the way, let's have a look at the script which executes when speaking to the clerk. Out of the box, all code which will be referenced at some point is loaded. I'll try to focus on the parts which are important for the glitch. This is our entry point, and the first two lines are lock you in place and let the NPC face you. Now flag 8-4 is checked. It keeps track if you already received the promotion gift. If set, the execution jumps right to showing you the clerk's final message. After that, flag 1 is checked. Just as before, we jump right to the end if true. If this wasn't the case, we continue and the very next line already sets it. What this means is, that flag 1 is used to determine if the code already executed before, so it doesn't run twice if you speak to the NPC again. Next in line are the following instructions. Play the happy music, show the greeting message, and determine from which side the player approached and execute the correct walk animations. The keen eye will already have spotted something quite interesting. There are only three code paths. That's because the NPC starting position prevents an approach from the right side, since there is a house blocking the path. So the developers didn't bother, because it can't happen anyway. Or so they thought at least. This causes the execution to stop right after the greeting, if you approach the clerk from the right side in their glitchy state. Just a quick side note, because I find it quite interesting. The movement for both the NPC and the player is hard-coded, instead of a more elegant approach, where only the former moves and the latter just follows in their footsteps. Also, the movement is declared for every single tile instead of a delta. For example, move up 5 times, instead of writing a single move upwards declaration 5 times in a row. Back to topic, so why do we even run into this glitch in the first place? It has to do with two things working in conjunction. And the first one is that there are scripts which get executed once you enter a new map. Like Old Little Town for example. As you can see here, the town also checks flag 8-4. If you didn't receive the promotion potion, the clerk is moved to a new position, which is the point right next to the bottom right house. The original position of this sprite is actually in front of the Pokemon, as you can see here on this event map. This in itself wouldn't even be an issue, since flag 8-4 is still zero. 
meaning the clock will be moved down to the position where the static reading and the walk animation. Unfortunately, there was a small oversight. Spites and towers keep being loaded with the current position and state if they are still in use. And this affects everything in the viewport and a few more tiles just outside of that. This current position and state is even preserved when you save and reload. The intention behind it is probably to avoid players softlocking themselves. Think of the boulder puzzles for example. The move sprite 2 instruction also doesn't execute as long as the sprite is loaded. Maybe this is even intentional to avoid breaking the immersion with teleporting sprites. Okay, so the clerk isn't moved like intended, but we still have flag 1, which prevents executing the walk animation, right? Wrong! See, flag 1 is a member of so called temporary flags, and those are implicitly reset whenever you enter a new map. Now everything comes together. The clerk won't be moved because the sprite is still loaded, and flag 1 was already reset once you entered route 103 thus setting everything up to execute once again. Before I start to explain my solution to solve this dilemma, I have an additional little fun fact for you. If you move to the left of the town without leaving it, the sprite unloads, but flag 1 will still be set. This results in the clerk moving next to the house like intended, but behaving like they are still standing in front of the Pokemon. Good, so how did I fix this mess now? It's pretty simple actually. I removed the code for checking and setting flag 1 since it doesn't work properly anyway, which frees up 12 bytes. Instead, I introduce a new call to move the execution to new custom code. Here I decide by evaluating the player's Y position if the clerk has been interacted with. The Y position of the player must be either 8 or 7 if you approach them while they stand in front of the Pokemon. Otherwise, the Y position must be higher. Keep in mind that the Y is zero at the very top of the map and increases while going down. As you might have noticed, I use the same variable twice when calling get player boss. I only care about the Y, and this way the value of X will simply be overwritten. Only one variable is needed this way, and the one in question was already in use by another part of the same script. Then this value gets compared to 8, and the return moves the execution back to the main block. If the comparison we just did resulted in lower or equal, I jump right to the code which executes after the walking animation, but skipping the first instruction which pops a message box explaining that in fact you stand in front of a Pokemon. No shit Sherlock. In case of Y being higher, we simply resume execution here. I inserted the single no-op instruction right after. This brings the length of the modification up to 12 bytes again and leads to the rest of the code staying at the very same offset it has always been at. All those changes get rid of multiple issues. Number one is that it prevents the clerk from forcing themselves into the trees like an absolute chad. The second problem solved is that you are now able to make a room in your inventory and speak to the NPC again right away instead of having to reset them. And the last fix is that the walk animation is correctly triggered if you reset the clerk by moving to the left of the town without leaving. Well, that's it. I decided to fix it for Ruby, Sapphire and Emerald as well this time, since the latter is plagued by the spark too. You can find IPS patches on my GitHub for every version, but also RBC files to compile this fix dynamically into your ROM. This way, you can even fix this issue in ROM hacks, which already introduced changes that might be overridden otherwise. This episode was quite a few seconds longer than the last one, since the issue was a lot more complex. But I hope you still had fun and found it interesting. I certainly enjoyed making this video, and I learned a ton about the inner workings of those games too. Until next time, have a good one and bye for now.